Sheeran, good morning. Just gone quarter past seven. If you're just switching on the radio, we're exploring some of the faith headlines from this week. And uh, many of them have centred on the Church of England and a huge discussion uh, about whether to allow the church to marry same sex couples. So here is what the currently currently the church teaches is that marriage is between a man and a woman and that clergy need to remain celibate if they're in a same sex partnership. But for the first time this week, senior bishops have come out publicly saying that the church needs to change. And one of those bishops is the Bishop of Oxford, Stephen Croft, who joins us this morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Really good to be with you. I wonder if you could just explain where this journey started for you when you started to think that actually the current teaching is incorrect. Uh, I think it's been a very gradual process uh, uh, for me over the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, uh, And uh, it's happened through uh, a double listening to people's experiences and uh, to scripture and the Christian tradition. So uh, I've heard a lot over the last 10 or 12 years about uh, how difficult uh, the experience of being in the church has been for LGBT plus people. Uh, as society has moved to affirm their deepest partnerships, relationships, and then marriages, uh, so uh, people have looked to the church to uh, bless and affirm uh, these uh, deepest relationships of their lives and have been really hurt and disappointed that we've not been able to do that. Is there Uh, a particular example, maybe a story that someone from the LGBTQ plus community shared with you that propelled you to this change? Uh, I I think it was gradual, but I think of one conversation I had uh, uh, with uh, uh, someone who was going to be married, who described a very long relationship in his life. Uh, uh, going back 30 years, uh, as almost as long as I'd then been married uh, to Anne, my wife. And as he described his relationship there, it, it sounded to me very, very similar uh, to uh, my own marriage, which has been deeply precious to me uh, across the years. One of the greatest gifts God has given me in life uh, is my marriage to Anne. And the church was able to bless one of our relationships and uh, affirm it uh, in public, but not the other. And that seemed to me deeply uh, unfair, really, when he was talking about the stability that this had given him and the mutual support. Uh, so, so there are many other stories like that. And indeed, I've had many other moving uh, emails and letters uh, from people this week in response to the essay, which have have, have helped. It, it's not enough on its own. We have to go back to the scriptures and read them. And the uh, essay I've published uh, uh, tries to do that, uh, to see how this view is compatible with the Let, scriptures. But, sorry, forgive me, because I know we're, we're kind of short on time, but I, I wonder if you could then explain for people in the church who are listening to you talk this morning and believe the scriptures are absolute and that uh, a marriage relationship is not between a man and a man or a woman and a woman and that it's only exclusively between a heterosexual couple and they believe that you are ignoring scripture, what would you say to them? Uh, I'd I'd say uh, I don't think I am ignoring scripture and the largest part of the essay I've published is, is about scripture. But I would say that we've learned a great deal about human sexuality and identity over the last hundred years and we need to take that to scripture and read it differently. I don't think what's being described in the New Testament passages about human sexuality is the faithful, permanent, stable partnerships that we see uh, around us in same-sex marriages today. I think it's something uh, uh, very different uh, and I think we need to uh, pay greater attention to those parts of the Bible where Jesus affirms God's love for all people equally and a great welcome to all kinds of people to be part of his church and part of his kingdom. One of the things that I've been reading this week, as you you talked about how you've come to to change your mind on this position, are discussions, cynical discussions about the fact that this is simply about getting bums on seats, you know, the fact that the church has become quite out of step with society and so we're seeing less people come through the front doors. Is it literally about that, increasing church numbers? Uh, No, it genuinely isn't that, but I think we do need to take seriously 
uh, a whole generation growing up now uh, who've grown up deeply accepting of same-sex relationships uh, and are struggling to un understand uh, the church's ongoing position on it. So uh, the, the way we are in relation to our whole society, uh, the society God has called us to love and serve, it is an important factor. Uh, it's not a, a sufficient on its own. We need to be satisfied that this is the right thing to do and discern this is the right thing to do in relation to the scriptures as well. Uh, but but how people uh, view the church and are able to uh, uh, see the church as a way to uh, know God in their lives and uh, uh, follow Christ is uh, uh, an important part of the church's responsibility. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain your thoughts this morning. That's the Bishop of Oxford, Stephen Croft, who's been explaining why he has changed his mind when it comes to same-sex marriages within the church. So currently, the church teaches that marriage is between a man and a woman. But actually, Stephen would like to see that change where marriages take place in the church community. It's all part of a consultation process, which has been going on for several several years in the Church of England, uh, where they've been trying to discuss different views on sexuality. The process is called Living in Love and Faith. And I, I wonder if you perhaps have been on your own journey um, to think about this yourself. Were you somebody who previously is part of one of our faith communities who did believe that marriage was exclusively between a man and a woman, and you've now changed your position? I know that it's early, but I would welcome your phone calls this morning. Do get in touch. 0808 100 100 is the number. 0808 08 100 100 or you can WhatsApp us 08000 321 3. Make sure barks is the first word in your message. Out. Marriage, same-sex marriage in the church. We've just been chatting to the Bishop of Oxford, who admits that he has changed his mind when it comes to same-sex marriage, and that he believes it's a time that those couples are able to get married, have blessings, if they so wish, within church communities. It's part of a large consultation which is going on, and the Bishop has written an essay about this. He's not the only voice from our area, by the way. Bishop Olivia, the Bishop of Reading, also says that it is time for change. What do you think? 08000 321 3. Make sure barks is the first word in your message. Shall we have a little quick scoot through some of the front pages this morning? Where shall we start? Uh, let's start with the Observer, actually, which talks about something you might have heard in our headlines at seven. This is nurses across the UK uh, voting to strike over pay. So this is the first ever national action in really thought that this is so wide ranging uh, amongst many others more into the front pages in a mo but first let's check out the weather here's b tucker hi good morning we have later there always get some shout 7 30 let's get the voted to strike it's the abbey ask but the royals will be looking then three one to all new on bb and also between guildford and gatwick and around when it comes regards to the Morning, but if you've just joined us, welcome. Uh, lovely to have your company as always. You find us exploring some of the faith headlines from this week. And we've just heard actually from the Bishop of Oxford, that's Stephen Croft, who says that it is time for the Church of England to change its teaching and allow the blessing of same sex marriage. Uh, but what do those from the LGBTQ plus community feel about his change in position. Let's talk um, to some of them in a few minutes and also hear from some of the ministers who work in our area and bring in uh, Richard Lamy, who is the rector of St. Paul's in Wokingham. Good morning. Good morning, Bashid. Uh, I wonder if you just heard my chat with the Bishop of Oxford and what you thought about how he explained how he'd come to this change in position. Um, I did, and uh, I have to say I'm feeling quite excited uh, this morning. I think... Um, there's two things that he, he was talking about, and having read his 
uh, personal reflection as well. That sense of responding to real lived experience and the people he knows, the people he met, the people he's worked with, challenging his opinion because of the quality and the commitment and the faithfulness of their relationships, but also going to scripture, um, going to um, God in prayer, really engaging deeply with the Bible and thinking, uh, what is God saying to us now? Here are these people, here is this situation, here are these questions, what is the Holy Spirit saying to us now? I think those two things together, I, I was quite inspired by what he said, really, and by his, the journey he's been on. You describe it inspired, exciting um, as a response to this news. I wonder how you think other people in the church, other wings of the church might receive the change in position from the Bishop of Oxford. I I think at at the same time, I'm excited, but also realistic. This is part of a very, very long um, conversation and process the church is going through. These kind of changes have to be taken uh, properly and carefully and can't be rushed. Um, if we do end up with a change, there's still a huge way to go between today and if we do get to do same-sex marriage blessings uh, or same-sex marriages in the years to come, getting this kind of change through um, General Synod is really, really hard because it has to be taken carefully. Uh, And I'm very conscious that locally, the churches that I know locally, I guess half the churches, roughly speaking, will be really uh, pleased by what the bishop said, about half will be uh, disappointed and sad. And many of those people are my really, really close friends that I worked really well with and, and pray with and enjoy being part of the same church. And so I'm, of course, conscious um, of their disappointment today. But equally, you know, we still work together. We're still really close friends. Uh, we still um, are doing the same job. And we've been having these disagreements for, um, for years and years and years now. And we've had meetings, we've had discussions, we've expressed to each other how we feel. Uh, We've talked to each other about it. We've had whole meetings around this, um, listening to each other. And so, in a sense, this is really good news from my point of view, but nothing changes in a sense. It's part of an ongoing process and a long process because we have to get this right. I wonder if you can explain for for us then how you have come to welcome those from LGBTQ plus backgrounds into your church, how you have got to this moment in your faith journey. Yeah, I mean, unlike the bishop, I've never really had a journey as such. Um, I was at university in the late 90s. Many of my friends were gay. And uh, as we grew up, you know, I fell in love and got married um, they fell in love in a committed relationship and uh, eventually had a, a secular marriage or, or a same-sex blessing. So in a sense, I've never really had a massive journey on this. Um, I've seen my friends grow up. Um, they've been massively supportive to me. When I've had problems, I've been supportive when they've had problems. And this feels like something we should be doing. So I, I've never had a kind of, what is God saying? I've always seen uh, the fruit of these relationships and they're my mates. So there's never been a long journey for me at all in that sense. I want to bring in Imogen Shepherd debate in here. Now, uh, Imogen is a Wokingham counsellor who's been involved in Wokingham Pride. Uh, just as we've been hearing Richard reflect on what he's been hearing from the Bishop of Oxford this morning, I wonder how do you feel uh, about the Bishop's change in position when it comes to welcoming same-sex marriage in churches? Good morning, Brigitte. Morning. Yes. Um, well, in answer to your question, I mean, it, it, how do I feel about it? it I, I absolutely welcome this and, and welcome this approach. I mean, the lack of action from the church has certainly created a, a, a history of hurt and pain for people in same-sex relationships. And there is a view that they are not accepted by the church when clearly our sexuality is part of how we are made. And it creates this dichotomy which um, gives an opportunity to bigotry and prejudice to thrive. Um, it, you know, if it goes on. So I I totally welcome um, same-sex mar- um, marriages being committed by the church. And I'm more and more coming across people who are in same-sex relationships who are want to be part of the church and are in committed lifelong relationships. And they certainly should be allowed to celebrate that, with, you know, with the blessing from a church. This is something that you've campaigned on for, for a long time. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Well, me, me and my wife, uh, we, we had a civil union in Vermont 20 years ago, um, which was before same-sex marriage was legal here in the UK. And we were able to upgrade it to civil marriage. Um, we consider ourselves to be married for, for that long, but obviously that length of time is not recognised in UK law. But um, 
I don't see how my relationship is, is different from my friends who are also in long-term relationships. Um, and, you know, I feel that this is long overdue, and, and it's something that the, the, the church should um, be welcoming of. Would it um, may have made a difference for, for your, in your relationship as a couple if you could have said, right, well, actually, we can get married in a, in a church? Um, it would have made a difference to our, us being together, as, you know, certainly not. Um, but it, it's, uh, society as a whole is more accepting of people in same-sex relationships. And, uh, you know, I'm a great believer in equal treatment. Um, and I certainly feel that creating a distance um, bet- between the church and how society views us uh, is not good for the church. And it's better for all people that, it, that uh, we are treated the same. I want to just bring Richard back in here. And finally, you, you did describe the fact that despite what we've been hearing from the Bishop of Reading and the Bishop of Oxford, this is going to be an incredibly s- slow process. What do you expect to happen now? Mm. Well, I think that's quite a tricky question. I think the key thing is that this is the first time uh, a serving, certainly a serving Boston bishop, or possibly even a serving bishop, has stood up as clearly as this and said, the rules need to change, we need to start doing this because this is what God is saying to us. And a number of other bishops have come um, c- come um, on Twitter and uh, on the press and said the same thing. So it feels like a really key moment. Um, but there's still uh, a lot of different opinions in the church and there is this process of government which means that at the end there has to be a vote on whatever proposal comes forward which could still go either way. So I'm really encouraged today but um, th- there's still a lot of reflection and prayer and decision making to happen. Richard, but, I imagine... Sorry, the, the other thing I would say very quickly is St Paul's Church working will be uh, very much one of the first to offer this um, when we're allowed to. I was about to say, well, <laughs> um, I imagine as soon as this comes in, then you will be first up there saying we want this, church, this change in our church. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think there might be... Would, would you be happy with a situation where certain churches could make their own decision? as to whether or not they were going to offer it, or do you think it has to be the case that every church should offer same-sex marriage, you know, if this was to come come about? I think both practically in terms of getting um, a decision, but also just in terms of people's moral, um, you know, personal opinions and personal beliefs. And um, you know, there, there are good... There are very, very good people who don't agree with me on this, uh, who are very, very close friends of mine. So the last thing I want to do is make anything um, impossible for them. So, no, I think it's absolutely right that people should be allowed. People and churches, not just clergy, people and churches are free and must be free to make their own decision on this in good conscience. And there will be plenty of churches around that are willing to do it. Essentially, it's the same as with um, still remarriage of divorcees. Uh, which Jesus says a lot more about than he does about this question. Um, people are still free to choose whether their church, whether they as individuals, offer um, to remarry people who've been married before. And uh, it has to be the same in this situation, I think. That's Richard Lamy, who's the rector of St. Paul's in Woking. And my thanks uh, for being with us on the show. And Imogen, just a final question to you. Uh, Imogen is a Woking councillor involved in Woking and Pride. Uh, I wonder, what, do you think that the people you work with at Woking and Pride and beyond would accept a situation where almost churches were making their own decision on this? Oh, absolutely, yes. I mean, as I understand it, Jesus did not say anything against LGBT people, and his message was all about acceptance, inclusion, loving God and each other. If that is the basis of what makes someone a Christian, then that is the premise that we must hold on to. Um, And certainly including people um, will make the lives of everyone better in the longer run. Imogen, thank you for your time this morning. Imogen Shepherd Debay, are you a member of our church community? What do you think then uh, about the news that the Bishop of Oxford, a serving bishop, has come out and said that he's had a change in feeling when it comes to same sex marriages, a change in position, and would like to see them take place in the church? Get in touch, please. It's- 